Uh, this is Connor. You were talking to us about bombs today. Um, the bomb experiment. Thank you, Connor. Uh, yeah, my name is Connor Lawyer. I'll be talking to you about bomb. Uh, Calar calorimeter. Um, so just an introduction. What is a calorimeter? It's a sealed vessel. Um, which has a smaller container in it, which is the bomb. Uh, you'll see this in a little bit. I have a, a detailed picture from the lab. Maybe. Um, so basically what goes on is there will be some sort of combustion reaction inside the bomb. Uh, and then what we're trying to figure out is we're trying to measure the heat of combustion by changing internal energy. So some thermo thermodynamic background. This, this one's real simple. Uh, it's just based off the first law. Um, so I'm sure Dr. Devretti and Dr. C pounded this into her head uh, that the change in internal energy is the heat minus the work. Um, but in this case, this uh, bomb is a sealed vessel, so there's no um, volume change, so there's no work being done. Um, so we're just going to equate um, the heat to the specific heat, uh, the mass and the change in temperature of the system. Uh, and going with this is uh, there's no conservation of energy, um, so all the energy that happens in the bomb will be transferred to the water, and that's how we're going to measure it. Um, so the objectives are just become familiar with this apparatus. Um, it's very practical in some engineering uh, worlds. Determine the thermal capacitance of the calorimeter, uh, and then determine the gross heat of combustion of some of the fuel samples that we'll use. Like I said, practical applications, uh, scientists will use this uh, just to determine if certain products are safe for use uh, in the workplace. Uh, here's some you know, coal, all kinds of fuels such as gas, uh, diesel fuel, jet fuel, uh, building materials, um, like there's certain building materials that can be used in certain situations depending on if they'll combust or not. Um, and then of course, rocket fuels and vitamins, food and stuff like that. Um, so here's the apparatus. This is a good diagram of the calorimeter. Um, so basically the outside shell and then the bomb sits inside there. You can see here in the water. And uh, you can see we have a thermocouple that will run to the deck similar to what we did in the last uh, class measuring temperature with the thermocouple. Um, so the procedure we're going to set up the ignition source and we're going to add a small fuel sample, uh, which would be benzoic acid, which we'll use in this lab. Um, then we're going to purge the bomb, so we're going to pressurize it and depressurize it. Basically we're getting all that excess uh, air out of it. Uh, then once you think that it's purged enough, you just set it at 30 ATM. Uh, then we prepare the water jacket, so we're going to add 2 kilograms of water to the bucket. And you want to make sure that the water temperature is about within plus or minus five degrees of whatever the ambient air temperature is, um, just so we get a more accurate reading when we go to measure the thermocouple. Um, then we're going to connect the thermocouple, of course, to the lid. Um, make sure your data acquisition program is ready to roll on the computer. Um, and then assembly. It's very important to be safe with this because we're dealing with high pressures. Uh, we're going to lower the bomb into the water without spilling any fuel or water. I uh, definitely want to make sure there's no leaks and you would see a leak by air bubbles of course because it's submerged in water. Uh, like I mentioned, this thing will be uh, under high pressures, 30 ATM, so 30 times atmospheric pressure. Uh, and you do not want any leaks coming out of that bomb. So, you know, that would injure yourself. And then you'll place the belt around the pulley. And then we'll begin just by logging room temperature. Just kind of get a baseline on the deck. Uh, and then after those two minutes are done, you're going to press the ignition. Uh, and very important, if the ignition light does not come on after a couple seconds, you definitely want to you know, back away and let the instructor know uh, just so we can you know, evaluate the situation and make sure everything's working correctly. Um, and then shut down, it's kind of a reverse process, turn the motor off, disconnect. Uh, and we want to measure the length of unburned wire just to determine the energy input. So some relevant data we're going to need for this experiment is the heating combustion for benzoic acid is negative 3,227 kilojoules per mole. Um, and then just a sample calc that was laid out in the lab manual. We approximate the system as 
two kilograms of water and three kilograms of stainless steel. Uh, you can go and look up the uh, engineering material tables for these specific heats. You got those. Uh, and then multiplying those by the mass and uh, specific heats of the uh, respective materials, uh, you get the total thermal capacitance of those. And then once you know the thermal capacitance, uh, you could use that equation that was in the one of the first slides to go and find your uh, temperature guys. So that's kind of a estimate of what we can expect um, in the lab. So, um, so possible uncertainties are the amount of fuel you use. You don't want to use more than one gram, so we're dealing with very you know, small increments. I uh, want your water temperature to be the same as ambient. Uh, make sure your thermocouple uh, is calibrated, and then, of course, instrument uncertainty. So, are there any questions?